In this session, we're going to look at creating our adventure game. So we're going to start with a dialogue. Much the same as what I've got on screen. You could start with something similar, but it's best to make your own story. So my story goes like this. The sun sets behind the hill, and the shadows become long as you travel down the road. You reach for the headlights as the road becomes dark. However, they fail to cast the light in the direction you are traveling. You think that nothing of this, but then you hear a knock coming from the back of the car, and you start to smell smoke. You think you have a flat tire and you pull to the side of the road. What do you do? And the options I want to give the user is stay in the car and call for help, get out of the car and check the tires, or start the car and drive on with no lights. Enter your option. So the user has an option now of picking one of these one, two, or three. If they enter in anything like hello, you'll notice that there's an error trap and it gives them the, the scene again. If they enter a number like one, it says then you are in room one. So if I run the program again and they enter the option two, they go to the second room. So depending on which option they pick, so if I pick number three now, they go to room three. So they are the different options. If they enter a number that's not in the list like four, they get the question again. And you notice that the screen sort of clears and keeps the dialogue at the bottom. So this way with a smaller user interface, they'll be able to read the dialogue and the question you want to give them. So what we want to be able to do is give them a question, make sure they enter in the correct information, and that they progress through your story and your choose your own adventure. So let's start coding this. So to do this, we're going to go up to our adventure game, which is a new project, and I'm just going to go new Python file, and I'm going to call it the adventure. And I'm going to reduce down the information there and I'm going to run the adventure and at the moment there's nothing in there. So the first thing we need to do is enter in our developer comments. Now your developer comments should have you as the developer, the date you're creating or in start date, the subject and also the program name. So in this case I've got a venture game project. Now once we've done that the next thing we need to do is start with our global imports. So these are any modules that you're going to import into the game. So one of the very first one I'm going to bring in is actually the import the random function. This is a function that I'll use to make little games for the player to play to make the game more interesting. Now once you've done that we need to start by creating what are called functions. So I'm going to start with the, the main program and I'm just going to message this out. And I'm going to call a function which is going to be the start room. Now you notice that I'm using pothole case, so everything's lowercase and separated by an underscore. And then above this, I'm actually then going to have my functions. So the first thing we need to do is define the function. So we're going to go define with def, and then we need to give its name. So you notice that we're calling this one the start room. And we're using the brackets again and then a semicolon at the end. So you could have this as your very first room. You could call it room zero, whatever you'd like to call. So when the program runs, the very first thing it's going to do is import. It's going to know what the functions are, and then it's going to call start room, which is here. So I'm going to go print, and this is a developer comment. I'm just going to put a couple of dots and in start room. And I'm going to test my program now by running it. And you can see that it's given us the runtime comment. So it's calling the start, going in and printing that out. So I'm in the right area. So what I want to do is use a different print function. So I can do this line by line by using a lot of statements. Otherwise, I can use the triple quotations. And this will keep the format of what I type in. So what I'd like to do now is enter in my dialog. Now, you can copy and paste from your script or however you want to do it. I'm going to copy and paste it from mine. And what you can see now is, rather than having the debug comment, I now have the sunsets behind the hill. So when I run my program now, you can see the dialog appear. Notice it's got the runtime Python version at the top, it's got my dialog, and then it finishes. So once I've done that, I then need to ask the user, well, what would you like to do? Now to do that, we need to use a input. So I'm going to start by asking it uh, for the user choice user underscore choice and I'll use this variable a lot to get the input for each room they go into and then I can prompt the user 
and try to give them information like enter option number. So hopefully they realize they've got to enter in one, two, three. If not, it's going to ask them again. So let's just check my program now. So I'll just save that, run it now, and it's going to enter a number. Oh, hang on, I've lost the dialog. So I'll enter in a number, and now it gives me the dialog. Now the reason for that is you notice that the formatting requires the indentation, otherwise this sits on the main root command. So if I push tab, which brings it in line with print here, it now becomes part of the start room function. So when I run it this time, you see I now have the dialog and then I've got to enter a choice and I can enter in one. But how do I make sure that they enter in one of these choices? Because if I wanted to, I could come in here and type in hello and it carries on quite happily. So how can I restrict that? Well, to do that, I can actually set some options for the user. So we're going to head up the top and we're going to set some a variable. And I'm going to call this start underscore room underscore option. So I'm going to set the options for this room. So each room that I define, so this is start room, I might have a room one, two, three, etc. These are the options for the start room. So what are these options? I'm going to use a square brace and a quote and then enter in one. So it's a character one, character two, and then the character three. So that represents one, two, and three. And this has created a list that I can check against. So once I've done that, I can then set the user choice. So at the moment, we have a user choice here. I'm just going to copy that up. And I'm just going to set the user choice to nothing at the moment, which is a quote, quote. So it's called an empty string. And then I can actually say, well, while user choice not in start, start room options will do something. So while it's not in there, so if it's not one, two, or three, it's gonna keep doing this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna indent the print so it becomes part of the while statement. And then I'm gonna ask them to enter the choice. And it's gonna keep doing that until we get one of the options. Once we've got one of the options, I'm then gonna say print bracket quote, you have, you have selected and then I'm gonna add user choice. Now to ensure that this is a string, what we're gonna do with the input is we're gonna str, so turn the input into a string to ensure that that's a string and that should append onto there. So let's run the program now. Enter in a number, I'm gonna enter in one. And it says you have selected one. Run it again. This time I'm gonna type in hello. Oh, it's just given me the whole dialogue again because obviously it wasn't the correct input. So once again, I'll just put Marsden. It's giving me the dialog again, because it's not in that list. But if I enter in three, the program ends because it's within that list. So how do I choose to go to another program? Well, we've just captured the choice by the user. So in this one line here, we've actually got the choice. So what we can do now, I'm just gonna rem out this so it doesn't run. And we can then say, well, enter the choice. So once they've entered the choice, we can then go, well, if user choice is equal, equal to start room option, and then we need to pick the option out of the list. Now you gotta remember we're using a list, so therefore, rather than being the number one, it's actually in position zero. Computers start counting at zero, so it's zero, one, two. So one's in zero, two's in one, and three's in two. So if they've selected, so if the user choice is equal to the start room position zero, so they've entered a one, we can then do something. Well, what do we wanna do? Well, let's send them off to another room. Let's send them to room 01. So this is known as a function call, and this will call another function the same way as start room. So we can actually link this to another room. But what if they didn't enter that and they entered in say two or something? So we go else if and user choice is equal equal to start room option one. So this is the second room. So what we can actually do is go to room 
02. Now we haven't declared room 02 and 01, that's why we're getting an error there. And if we wanted to, we can actually then go else if once more. And we can actually go to room 03. But we need to actually define what those rooms are. So what we're going to do now is go down here and go define room 01. And what do we want to do then? Well, let's just go print bracket um, quote. Let's put some spaces in. So we've got a couple of lines breaks between the old dialogue and the new one. And then I can put uh, just a marker and say, you are in room 01 now. And we're just going to repeat this for rooms two and three. So the idea is if they enter in uh, a one, they will go to room one. If they enter in two, they go to room two, which I'm defining now. And if they enter in a th three, which I need to correct this back to a two, bring that back in there too. So if they enter a two, they'll go to room three. And make sure you put your colons on the end. And let's see if this works now. So I'm just going to save that with the command S. Enter in an option. One. You are now in room one. If I enter in two, I get room two. If I enter in three, I get room three. If I enter in anything else, I get the question again. So that ensures that I can jump from one screen to the next. But if I enter in like one, how do I kill off the previous dialogue? Well, there's a nice way of doing that. And we could actually write another function. So I'm just going to go right at the top and call this function um, CLR. So it's like clear screen. So, or CLS would be better, CLS. So this is like clear screen. And what do we want to do? I'm just going to use a print command, and then I'm going to use the backslash n, which is a new line command, but I'm going to say, give me 100 of them. So give me 100 of those backslash n's. So every time I call CLS, so in here, CLS, bracket, bracket, it will actually print out 100 blank lines which will move everything down the page. So let's have a look at that. So here it is now. Notice there's no lines, uh, there's, and I'll keep scrolling up, there's 100 blank lines between there and the question above. So if I enter in the wrong thing, like Marsden, it then rebuilds the question. Oh, now notice that we got the question, Marsden, and then the question again. So what I'm gonna do is now move this down, cut it out of there, delete that line, and put it inside the while statement so it clears the screen and then prints information on the screen. So let's try again. So once again, I put the wrong thing in and now it's cleared the screen. If I scroll all the way up, obviously it's gonna be there 100 lines up. So when I go into room one, the first thing I might wanna do is clear the screen. So I just go clear screen, bracket, bracket. So when I go into room one, I now are in room one. So this is a good way to actually build your program. It allows you to move through your mind map of your code and your story, and it helps you modulate your code and build each section and traverse through your choose your own adventure. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and enables you to get on with your project.